Tip number one, this is for people who have a low level of energy or laid back, then you need to bring your level of energy higher. This is a problem that I had when I was taking the LC. The level of my energy was quite low, I'm quite laid back. So what I had to do is to bring my level of energy higher. In the tone of your voice, you need to have this energy and feel this warmth. First impression counts. So when you're talking to your patient, it's very important you have the right level of energy and there's a warmth in your voice. Sometimes if you're smiling while you're speaking over the phone, it makes a big difference in your level of energy and the positive energy that you actually radiate. So let me show you an example. Calling your patient. Hi, my name is Dr. Irwin. I'm from the health center. Now, can you see the difference in this voice? Hi, my name is Dr. Irwin. I'm calling you from the health center. So which voice sounds more friendly and has more warmth in it? It's important that when you're communicating with your patient, your voice conveys this friendliness, this warmth, and it's going to help you with your interpersonal skill to build rapport with your patient and trust easier. Tip number two is to keep your history focused. There's so many temptations as to asking different questions because you don't want to miss anything. And then when you're asking questions, you're getting different cues. You don't know how much you need to dig. So because the RCA is an exam where you have limited time, you need to be selective in the question that you're asking. So often I see registrars asking various questions and they're not selective in which question they're going to ask. So if you're asking all these questions and it's not helping you to drive the consultation forward, then what you're doing is you're wasting your time because you're dwelling in data gathering at the expense of clinical management. So make sure that you ask questions about relevant cues and pick them up and don't dwell too much on non-essential things because yes, if it's ideal, you would have asked all these questions, but because this is an exam, you only have 12 minutes. It's very important that you keep your history focused to so make sure that you're selective in your question. The question that you definitely need to ask, such as red flags, you need to make sure that you rule out some serious pathologies and then there are other questions that's less essential. So be selective in the questions that you're asking and keep your history focused. Last but not least is to listen to your patient. Actively listen to your patient. If you're not listening actively, then you're going to miss cues and you're going to ask repetitive questions. This is a skill that's often overlooked. Registrars who listen actively and pay attention to the patient they build up credit with the patient, they build up trust, and when they actually happen to interrupt the patient, there's less chance that the patient will take it the wrong way because they've built up enough credit and the patient feels that they have been given the time and they felt understood. So make sure that you're listening to your patient because the patient is going to give you cues and if you listen actively to your patient, you're going to pick up on these relevant cues. If you're not listening actively, what's going to happen is that you might ask the same question and don't realize that you just asked that two minutes ago. So if you listen actively, you're going to have a natural conversation that's going to flow. If you find yourself doing more of the talking in a consultation, it's likely that you're not listening enough. So make sure that you're listening more than you're talking. You've got two ears and one mouth. Use it in that order. So make sure that you're listening to your patient. So let's recap on these three tips that we've discussed today. The first tip is to bring your level of energy higher. Make sure that you're radiating a positive energy. Smile if you feel like smiling over the phone. This is going to affect the way that you communicate this energy to your patient. Tip number two is to make sure that you keep your history focused. Make sure that you're selective in the question that you're asking your patient. Last but not least, listen to your patient. Listen to your patient. If you found this video useful, make sure you smash the like button and don't forget to subscribe and turn on notification so you don't miss any future videos. Let me know down in the comment section which is your favorite tip. Let me know down. I look forward to reading your comments. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye. If you found this video useful, then I've got another video I'm sure you're going to get a lot of value from. This is a video where I interviewed Dr. Karen Asher, who recently passed her RCA first attempt. We discussed her process, her approach to the RCA, what she wished she knew, what she done differently, and you get a lot from this interview. Click on the video to watch it, and if you'd like to have the RCA blueprint, 
then click in the link down in the description below.